it's almost 18 months since our tesla model 3 was delivered to us and we just completed 20000 miles this is an ownership review of this car i still believe to be the best daily driver that's out there we've had a flawless experience and in this video we will share with you our feedback and thoughts our experience driving it its performance in everyday life and on long trips its wear and tear and most importantly its performance as an electric vehicle we received the delivery of the model 3 on the 9th of december 2022 and we have added exactly 20000 miles as on june 1 2024 we have a video on the 10000 miles review of this car and that video can be viewed in the description that should help the viewers check the changes first hand this is the pre refresh of what's now the old 2023 tesla model 3 rev will drive with the lfp battery it's currently unavailable in an order for a new model 3 except probably in the tesla inventory we received it with all the included options and no add-ons so let's get into it the real value in the model 3 is in fact driving it it's as good in daily driving entering and exiting those parking lots as it is on long road trips doing nearly 4 and a half miles for every kilowatt hour consumed combined that city and highway At the onset features change rapidly in Teslas particularly with software what you see is hence relevant to this car in particular alone at this point in time let's quickly check the specs the Tesla Model 3 is 184.8 inches in length 82.2 inches in width and 56.8 inches tall it has a curb weight of 3557.4 pounds a ground clearance of 5.5 inches and a 113.2 inches of wheelbase The car has a healthy headroom of 40.3 inches in the front and 37.7 inches in the rear and legroom of 42.7 inches in the front and 35.2 inches in the rear very logical for a sports sedan that has a roof that curves down in its aero profile so much has changed in the model 3 since it began production that one could probably expect every part to be new new lights new cameras the double pane glass its lfp battery has no cobalt and for those sensitive for sustainability that's a good take away the lfp battery in this car can be charged to 100% in fact it actually needs to be charged to 100% at least once a week an lfp battery has little spread in its voltage from high to low in state of charge so in order for the bms to perform its calculations it needs to see top charge a battery like this has literally no rules you can supercharge it as much as you like charge to whatever extent and you will see little to no effect The downside will be a poor top charging rate when in cold environments and it needs perfect preconditioning which is automatic in a Tesla. To counter that this car will use waste heat from its single motor which will be typically half of that on a dual motor to precondition the battery. It will probably add to that heat with its heat pump. So without getting any more nerdy let's get into the review. The Model 3 has been styled with full LED headlights and LED turn signals together. It has a fog lamps which are inactive and have no controls for them in the car. At the rear it has full LED modules with the turn lights in red. With Tesla's vision only strategy it's been stripped of its parking sensors and relies on its cameras alone. It has a included autopilot and most common safety systems. If you'd like to see our video on how the car works with the FSD 12.3.3 check that link here or in the description. Full self driving is available for a monthly subscription of $1.99. or dollar 8000 flat as at the time of making this video the only accessory that came with the model 3 was a j1772 adapter for level 2 charging the adapter works perfectly and we have been using it daily it has a 3.1 cubic feet front trunk and a 19.8 cubic feet rear cargo that's good enough for two full size bags in the rear and is added to with a handy under storage it has no room for any spare tire as such or no spare tire whatsoever We have never been short on cargo space though. It has a lone rear motor that offers 271 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. It does a 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. That surely software limited and Tesla unlocks it for higher trims. As a user I don't care much for these performance variables. The trim has an LFP battery that was 61 kilowatt hour gross, 57 kilowatt hour usable. It can be charged to 100% daily. and had a range of 272 miles all when new that's now down to 262 miles or down by about 3 and 1/2% with the degradation from 20000 miles of driving range that's more than adequate with the amazing charging options that tesla offers 
We strongly emphasize on adequate charging options with electric vehicles, much more than range. The critical factor that differentiates gas-powered vehicles from EVs, which enjoy abundant gas stations. That differs with large electric vehicles that need to haul, and those need all the range they can have. It can charge at 170 kW DC and 7.2 kW or 32 amps AC. It has the advantage of the native Tesla port and access to the Tesla supercharger network natively. We enjoy free level 2 charging at home at 7 kW and that's perfectly served us over the past 18 months. On trips, we most commonly book places that offer free charging, of which there are plenty of them in California and growing, and have only used the supercharger on 5 to 7 occasions. We have totally spent under dollar seventy-five on charging across the eighteen months and twenty thousand miles. This is a kind of a special case, and not many may find it as easy as we have. We opted for the pearl white multi coat, which was the included color then, with the all black interior. Currently, the included color is stealth grey. This car came with the eighteen inches aero wheels, the Michelin two thirty-five forty-five R eighteens. The new Model Three brings the eighteen inch photon wheels as its included option. The aero wheels come with hub caps that can be pulled out. We incurred a gross capitalized cost at the time of dollar forty four thousand six ninety to obtain this car. That price is now at least twelve percent lower with the refreshed Model Three when an order is placed for a new one, which comes with an even better ride and some good additional value. You can check our video on the new Model Three with the link given here or in the description. The interior of the Model 3 establishes itself with a large glass roof. A beam in the center though separates that roof and though it gets toasty on top in high temperatures, Tesla has done well to dim the sunlight just enough for comfort inside. The rear seats don't recline and that maintains good headroom for the rear passengers. The front seats have height adjustable seat belts and fixed height headrests. The seats have no perforations with no seat ventilation. The front door panels have large portions of soft touch material and hard plastics with imitation suede in the center section. The door panels have a large speaker near the footrest, a smaller one atop the A pillars and one in the inside corner alongside the side mirrors. You can see for yourself for how all of that has held up over 20,000 miles. The dash has a prominent and large wooden strip that runs from one side to the other, extending on the door panels with an aluminum trim beneath. This could be different in trims from different model years, as said before. It has a soft touch bin style glove box that has a powered opening but manual closing. Above the wooden strip are the vents followed by a large soft touch surface with some kind of fabric material near the windshield. One of my early gripes with the Tesla was the lack of an instrument cluster and here its absence helps the air from the vents reach me directly. Back then I was coming off a conventional car and was too used to seeing the speed right in front. Though many people feel annoyed with the vent controls being exclusively on the center display, I have no such qualms and I relish the absence of buttons. But for those who think otherwise, I perfectly understand them. At the center is the 15 inch center display that controls all the functions of the car. Here I have no film or protection whatsoever on it and its condition is for you to see. The rear view visibility is better than the Model Y and I wonder if that's on account of the center beam dividing the glass roof in the center instead of the massive glass in the Model Y that gets the large support beam only behind the rear passengers with a plunging glass roof. Reclining seats there also reduce headroom comfort and things get particularly short for passengers on the likely optioned row 3 in the Model Y. Anyway, the Model Y is a separate case no matter how similar to the Model 3 it may seem and is also due for its own refresh. We'll look forward to that. The Model 3 has a round 3-spoke wheel. This, the old Model 3, still has the turn signal stock on the left, packaged along with the windshield wiper button. On the right is the shifter stock with the drive, reverse, park and neutral functions, with a double or single down setting for cruise control or autopilot. That can be set in the settings. The scroll wheels are all that's there on the steering wheel and they perform multiple functions. All of these are working as well as they did on day one. The new Model 3 has no stocks and all of its controls are on the wheel. The center console has two large wireless charging mats on soft touch material, carefully leveled with a small protrusion that prevents the phone from falling. It has a large storage area with the two USB-C ports covered with a soft plastic sliding cover, followed by two large cup holders. Then a large padded center console with yet more storage underneath. Inside this console is a 12 volt port. Behind the center console are the vents for the rear passengers and two additional USB-C ports. 
In the new Model 3, there is also the rear screen among the major upgrades. The Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive is in many ways the template for a good electric vehicle. Over the years, it's vastly improved its build quality, which gave several early users a bad experience. As a matter of fact, to some extent, it owes its improvements to those early adopters. In much the same manner as our driving today will benefit those future users of advanced systems like FSD. If you have questions on anything on this car or EVs in general, feel free to drop those in the comments. We are glad to see the ever increasing engagement with our work and please don't forget to do all the good things. We will do our best to keep bringing and documenting our experiences in this space. If you would like to see our full impressions of the Tesla Cybertruck, click the link here or in the description. See you in the next one.